Uh, why don't we um, call up um, Geisha Williams right now for pg and Electric. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chairwoman Yi, Lieutenant Governor Newsom, and Commissioner Ortega. I'm Geisha Williams, and I'm president of pg and Electric, and I'm delighted to be here today <coughs> to speak before you on, on the issue of the Diablo Canyon. I'd like to begin by thanking the Commission staff uh, for their incredible and very hard work and detailed analysis for many, many months now. Thank you for that comprehensive report. And I'd also like to thank the commissioners, all of you, for really challenging us to think about a different type of clean energy future for California. And I believe that what we're proposing today really delivers on that challenge. As you know, pg and &E has joined with labor and with leading environmental organizations to imagine a really different uh, clean energy future for this great state. Together, we developed a proposal that would increase investment in energy efficiency, renewables, and storage while phasing out PG&E's production of nuclear power at Diablo Canyon in 2024 and 2025, at the same time that the original operating licenses come to an end. The proposal includes a PG&E commitment to a 55% renewable energy target by 2031, an unprecedented voluntary commitment by a major U.S. energy company, and frankly, a commitment that as I stand before you, I am proud to make. The parties to the proposal are varied, and they include the IBEW Local 1245, the Coalition of California Utility Employees, Friends of the Earth, the Natural Resources Defense Council, Environment California, and the Alliance for, for Nuclear Responsibility. This is a coalition of labor and environmental partners with diverse points of view. And that's why it's such a powerful statement that we collectively came to a shared vision for what we believe is the best and most responsible path forward when it respect to Diablo Canyon. A key element of this vision is that it recognizes the value of carbon-free nuclear power as an important bridge strategy over the next eight to nine years. This transition period will help to ensure that power remains affordable and importantly, that we don't increase the use of fossil fuels while we move to support California's energy vision for the future. Equally important, the transition will provide essential time needed for our valued employees and for the community to effectively plan for the future, a future without Diablo Canyon. The day we announced our joint proposal, pg and &E CEO Tony Early, local, IBEW Local 1245 Business Manager Tom Dalzell, and I were all on site at Diablo Canyon to explain our decision to our employees. We began a series of employee meetings at 5.15 in the morning, and the meetings went on till past 9.15 at night. We were able to touch about 1,000 of our 1,400 employees over the course of the day. As you can imagine, it was a very difficult day for our Diablo team, as they hoped that we would be seeking relicensing. We talked about our rationale for the decision, and we also talked about the need to finish safe and finish strong. We are immensely proud of Diablo Canyon's track record of industry leading safety and reliability performance. These results, frankly, would not be possible without the dedication of the skilled team of professionals that run the plant day in and day out. To continue to deliver these positive results, the parties agree that it's important for us to retain this team at Diablo. And that's why we've included in the joint proposal a package of retention benefits and retraining opportunities for our team that runs the plant every day. The feedback that we've been getting and continue to get from the employees during our meetings and after our meetings have been that they felt valued as a result of the proposed benefits. And they frankly, in turn, value the certainty for themselves and for their families that the proposal represents. For the community, we're proposing a $50 million transition package. In essence, this keeps tax payments at current levels until 2025 and again allows for essential planning for the future. 
Again, certainty being so very beneficial. Now, these employee and community benefits all would have to be approved by the CPUC, so there's much more work to be done. But that can't happen without your support first here today. We need the lease extensions for our intake and outflow structures. To that end, we respectfully stand before you and ask that this extension be granted today without a requirement for an environmental impact report. Again, all we're requesting is a short-term, six-year lease extension to accommodate existing operations. License renewable, renewal is off the table. The categorical exemption in CEQA for existing facilities clearly applies under these circumstances. Your staff agrees with the outcome, and so do our partners to the joint proposal. Put simply, we believe that an EIR is not legally required, necessary, or desirable. With your help, we can move forward. Move forward to a future where clean, affordable, renewable energy dominates our energy supply and helps us build a better California while doing more than any other state in the nation to protect our environment. I want to thank you for your leadership and for your commitment to moving our state forward. And last, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you, Ms. Williams.